Wetlands are great storehouses of carbon. They store it in the above ground biomass. That would be trees and shrubs and plants that are all taking carbon out of the atmosphere and using photosynthesis to create plant life and energy and growth and then giving out oxygen. So they're actually helping us to breathe, replacing and using carbon and emitting oxygen. Uh, but also there's a lot of carbon storage that goes on down underneath in the soil profile. And so wetlands year by year, all of these productive grasses and sedges and rushes are slowly uh, building up and building a layer of humus, which then becomes a layer of organic soil. And because of the saturated soils, they tend to not decay. They don't go back up into the atmosphere. They stay in the soil and build up a carbon rich soil. When it gets to be several inches thick, we start to call that soil peat. Or if it's a little bit decomposed, we call it muck. That's the technical term for decomposed peat. Um, and peat then stores, peat and muck store tremendous amounts of carbon, carbon and they store them for thousands and thousands of years. So this is very long-term storage of carbon resources, such that a wetland forest like this one we're standing in will store 10 times as much carbon as an, as an upland forest, a, a, a normal forest you walk in that's not wet. And it's because of those organic rich soils. So you have both the trees and shrubs above and the soils below that are actively uh, creating long-term stores of carbon. Here we have in the upper part of the soil the darker organic rich material where all the decomposed grasses and sedges are. And then in the lower part, we have this oxidation reduction where the iron in the soil is actually rusting out and forming these bright orange patches, just like if you leave your bicycle out in the rain and it rusts, that's what this soil is doing. And that creates very special conditions. Plants need special adaptations to be able to survive in this type of soil. And that's why we have such interesting wetland plants. Now, unfortunately, the flip side of this is if we drain our wetlands or develop them and, and uh, drain off that water, all that carbon will go back into the atmosphere. And so we've lost that storehouse. So wetlands in their natural state are great uh, storehouses of carbon, but disturbed wetlands then become sources of carbon.